Most people in America are looking for, how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having? In America, we have the right to be ourselves. We have the right to do things. We have the right to say things. We have the right to think and feel things. We have the right to believe things. And these are things all brought to us underneath the U.S. Constitution, the amendments called the Bill of Rights, and frankly, every treaty that we participate in as an American country, American continent, and the rest of the world. So this is what I don't get. Why is it that people think they have the right to you? Why is it that women think they have the right to call you boo when you've never met them before in your life? Why is it that women think they have the right to own men? I don't get this. And why is it that white men think they have the right to own me or you? I don't get that either. We moved slavery out of America a long time ago, and yet we have human trafficking going on every day. We have immoral people using their telephones to play a tag game a person-to-person -person game, a solicitous, salacious game of ruining people's lives. Where is he today? What is he doing now? None of your business. Openly, my business is my business. Your life is your life. And yet we have people who are total strangers to us who think they have rights to our life. The right to life is a movement that has been totally obliterated in a lot of ways because people are tired of white men and white women from religious fields coming into their life trying to tell them what they can do and can't do with their own human body. You see, it's an abomination in a way for women to get pregnant accidentally because their fellow was too lazy to put things on or take care of themselves or do what they need to do to prevent that. At the same time, she has a responsibility to be on the pill or do whatever she needs to do to prevent that and prevent illness and the transfer of that. But at no time does any human being have the right to turn you into some sort of little play toy, some little bitty game to play with, someone to touch, someone to ruin clothing or someone to resize fabrics, someone to do things to. And yet we have a whole stint of population watching these Big Brother houses and these things like that, spy games and whatnot, that are totally ruining our rights to privacy. Facebook has destroyed our rights to privacy, but at the same time, you can't even use it like a telephone book. In the old days, you could type in somebody's name and find them. Today, you try and type in somebody's name from your past just to reconnect and say hello, like the big stories of these people who fall in love after they haven't seen each other in years and all this shit. You can't find anybody. You can't find one person because most of the people that you once knew have a new last name because they got married and then they screwed it up and they lost it. Or you can't even remember their name. And isn't that funny? But in my life, I have a high visual index. And that high visual index allowed me to find my girlfriend from college. And I did that because I did remember, because you remember those painful moments, the new last name of her fella. It was a military man. So I was able to punch that in and find my old college girlfriend. But I found her on less than a, what was it, a half square, a half inch by half inch square. And it was a family photo. So you got five or six people in this photograph. But I was able to find her by just one look. And it was based on her stance. And that impression, that imprint on my mind has lasted me a lifetime because that stance was hers, but it was also something I noticed in her mother when we visited that house in Boston. Her father worked for the Pentagon and she was sort of a smarty pants, but I really valued about that. She was a year older than me and we had a lot of fun. We did a lot of romantic, wonderful things together. But that is part of my life story. It's not a part of your life story. What about you? What stories do you have that are really truly yours? that you made on your own, not that you've stolen from someone like me. I mean, seriously, if you haven't had a life because you've been so busy on drugs and alcohol and all that stuff, that's on you. You made your choices, you made your bed, you line it. But the saying that I always tell these young men on campus when I'm around there and they're looking at me like I'm some pauper, I'm so, yeah, at the present moment I am, but I didn't do this to me. I did not do this to me. Now someone say, well, wait a minute, that's not true, you're trying to blame other people. No, I had cybercrime admitted committed against me. I had identity theft committed against me. I have property theft committed against me. And I've had fraud committed against me. So you try and get out of all that shit and try to get into a place to live and whatnot. And openly, I don't have to go into the things that I've had to deal with with my biological family. Everybody's got a dysfunctional family. And that's why we go off and we make a family of choice.